Hmm, get a tragic here and welcome back to Arkham Horror. Oh, tell you what, it's a hot day today. I've got my VB and it's time to do this. Now the question is, is it even possible? How are we going to do this? Oh, the pleasure. The pleasure I get from drinking a beer on a hot day. Right, what am I doing? For, before I get into this, I'm going to have to do a correction. Basically, last turn, Lily was in Arkham Asylum, and she went all the way down here to South Church, where she traded with Hank, picked up this tome, and then cast it and saved the game by getting rid of a gate. This is all actually illegal, because... I forgot that this tome also requires two movement points to do it. And even though she picked up the motorcycle, moving from Arkham to the South Church is six spaces. So she didn't have any, any, she only has four movement, right? So she has a total of six, even with the motorcycle. So she can't actually use the tome. Lucky for us, though, there is an easy fix. This guy, Joe, he was at the graveyard and he went to the unnameable and picked up a clue. So we'll just put that clue back. He actually has, I've, I've forgotten if I, I don't think I used his focus, but maybe I did, but he's got three focus. So even if we use some focus, probably didn't use all of it. So if we make his movement six, he can go one, two, three, four to South Church, trade with Hank. Well, I actually wouldn't be able to trade with Hank, would he? That we'd have to have Lily move to South Church, then trade with Hank, and then Hank does his turn. And then when Joe Diamond's turn, he goes one, two, three, four, and trades with uh, the girl to get this back off him. Then he casts it. And he'll have two movement left, so he is able to use this. So what I'm trying to get at here is that we did a lot of trading and swapping around, but by just changing Joe's turn, nothing really changes. Okay, that basically fixes that error in the turn. But we do need to still roll and see if we can get a law. So basically, he has no law. We need a law to win. So he has to spend clues. Now, every clue he spends, he gets plus one die. So he actually gets to roll two die. So we get to roll four die here. And this is the first test because we are about to lose this game. We have one, two, three, four gates open. We lose the game. Well, the the final battle starts at five gates. So what that means is, just take another sip of my beer, that unless we can close a gate this turn or we draw a, a, a monster surge rather than a gate opening, the final battle will start. Okay, so it's actually pretty, very, very difficult. And it would have meant that when the Black Cave opened, right, when this card was drawn last turn, we would have lost the game. So the first of the roll or die things happens now. We need, we've got two, two clues and we need one success using one of these clues. Or it is games lease over. Well, not game over. I mean, we go to the final battle, which is basically game over. But we get a success, so all's good. You blamo. Now, we are in the same position. We're in the exact same position. We have four gates open. We have another Mythos card coming, of course. How can we stop that from happening? And there's a couple of ways. When I was looking at the game state, I did find an interesting combo, but it's illegal in a way. Basically, this card here says, during the Arkham Encounters phase, you can do the text, right? And the text allows you to close a gate. Now, during the Arkham Encounters phase, we can use this guy's scrounge ability to draw from the bottom of the unique item deck when he's at the curiosity shop to pull this out of the discard pile and then use it. So basically, he could go to the curiosity shop and use this every turn that he has the money to buy it and that he has the uh, sanity to run it. Because it happens in the encounter, Arkham Encounters phase. So, for example, this tome here happens at any phase. Most of the tomes occur during the movement phase. And that's where the confusion comes in. Because if you look at the actual text, exhaust and spend two movement points. 
And those movement points can only be generated during the movement phase. So this, this card is actually broken. It doesn't work. Like it, the text does not make sense. There is a misprint. It's not like it needs a rata to fix a power levels or something. I mean, this is a broken card. Now, here's the annoying thing. This game is out of print and they released a final FAQ and this card is not in the final FAQ. This card is mentioned in the final FAQ, but the FAQ uh, entry for this card just says you keep the gate that you discard, which in fact we didn't do. So let's actually do that now. We'll give that to Joe. There is no, it's not in the rules and it's not in the FAQ. And the basic rule that I follow in board games is that if it's not an official rule and if it's not in an official FAQ, it's up in the air to be whatever the hell you want. Now there is another source you can cite for Arkham Horror and that's there's a very well maintained, well it's not really maintained anymore. I th well I think it's maintained but it's sealed. You can't edit it. There's a Ho Arkham Horror wiki. And if you look up this card on the wiki it has a clarification down the bottom that says misprint card should be used during the movement phase not the Arkham Encounters phase. So that is a clarification for this card. And it makes sense because a lot of cards are done in the movement phase and this does require movement points to use. But if it's not in the official FAQ and it's not in the actual rules, who clarified this? I mean, I don't know who wrote the wiki. How? Why is his opinion any different from the other 500 zillion people on Twitter or wherever who talk about this card? It could be just as likely that the exhaust spend two movement points is the misprint because they took the template and forgot to, they changed the Arkham Encounters to the correct phase, but then they forgot to delete that section of the text from the template. Who knows? We don't know. And because there's no FAQ, we have never know. But I think it's a pretty safe guess that uh, the movement phase would be usable to do it during the movement phase because it does have the movement points. And I'm happy to play that rule. All I'm saying is that this... Is this is a broken card that I should probably maybe even remove from the game because you can do it either way and neither is wrong in inverted commas. I mean, this any game a game like this you can play it any way you want anyway. You can do any kind of house rule, but this particular thing there's no right or wrong. No, you can't. Someone can't come to you and say, "Oop, you can't do it in the encounter phase" because you can go, "Well, it's not in the official FAQ and that has been finalized by the developers." So they didn't mention it, and they actually chose to mention this card in that FAQ, and they still didn't mention it. So, you know, what are you talking about, mate? Whatever. The point is, the combo of using Ashcan Pete and Curiosity Shop, we're not going to use it, because we're going to say we have to use it during the movement phase, like the wiki. So that is off the table, okay? That solution to our problem, can't do it. So, what solution do we have instead? Is there anything we can do here? There is one more chance. One more chance that we have. And that is, if we go to the science building and we do a dog pile on the science building and just pile up here, every single investigator, we may be able to dig out the encounter that allows us to discard gates, to close them, basically. Now, I don't usually use this ability because it adds more doom tokens, but we don't have a choice here. This is the only way we can close a gate. In the base set, even with the Dunwich uh, location cards for Arkham and all the other cards on the table, nothing except this science card will allow us to close gates. So that's what we have to do. So this turn, every single player is just heading to the science building. Okay, and we're just going to go there. Now, it gets even worse. <laughs> it gets even worse because this effect is a law minus two. And we are really light on law with our investigators because of me not using the focus much because of all the favors of Bast. For example, this girl here, she's only got one focus. She can only get to two law, which means she's an automatic fail and she has no clues. And same with Hank. Hank has, Hank has no clues and he has no law. So he's an automatic fail if he draws the card. But Joe Diamond, he can actually get to three law and he's got uh, one clue because we spent a clue to do that, uh, you know, to close that gate. And 
Ashcan, while he can only get to two law, he does have three clues, so he can at least attempt it. She's got four, and of course, Sister and Leo are both in other worlds. So out of the six available investigators, we only have four that are even capable of attempting the event. Pretty bad odds. But there's more. Oh yeah, it keeps going. <laughs> if we look over here, yoink, you can see that I'm using an incredibly common popular variant for this game with discard piles. So discard piles in almost all cases are almost identical to the official rules, which is to place the cards on the bottom of the deck. The Arkham Horror rule is that there are no discard piles. Everything's placed under the deck. So for example, in this mod, the face up card is the bottom of the deck. So when I draw from the bottom of the deck, I draw from the top of the discard pile. If there's nothing in the discard pile, it'll draw from the bottom of the deck. But officially, this is what these decks should look like. Like that. So the card's on the bottom. So that is officially the way this the decks should all work. And the idea is just to remove the footprint of the game, make it smaller. And... It's the same for the these cards. These are all these all these cards are supposed to be discarded to the bottom of the location decks, not into discard piles. Now the reason why almost everybody uses discard piles is because they're so much quicker. People have found when you're playing six player games, five player games, whatever, just simple act of every single turn having to play pick up the deck. Usually because the table's so big, they've got to reach right over, pick up the deck, they put it underneath the thing, they shuffle the deck before every draw, etc., etc., etc. It can add, and we're talking like 40 minutes to the game time just by using this rule. Because doing all that picking up and reshuffling and putting it underneath the deck is a lot slower than just chucking the card onto the, into a discard pile, which takes about half a second. So that's the way I do it in this mod. And in almost all situations, it doesn't matter. The only time it really matters is when you're digging for a single individual card, which is what we're doing now. We want a single card. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because... <laughs> The card we're looking for is in the discard pile. We drew it last turn. This is the card we want. Okay. So the official rules mean that this, these should be on the bottom of the deck like that. And then every time you draw a location card, you shuffle it first and then you draw. Okay. And then it gets discarded back into the deck and then you shuffle and then you draw. That is the official rules. And if you look at my, you know, roadmap list, I guess you'd call it like a really, I've got a really simple roadmap on the mod page. Adding, a, I'm going to, I'm adding, going to add a little like thing over here that has various options you can tick. And one of these options is going to be to use the official location card rules. But at the moment it's not implemented because I literally never play this method. But I've got to play it this time because we need that card. We need, if we do not draw this card, it is actually game over. And wherever the hell it is, it's because I just shuffled it in. Okay, so there's the card. All right, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we wouldn't have drawn this because it's the seventh card. So as long as this card ends up somewhere in the first six, we should be right. Okay? Because without that card... It's game over. Now, again, the rules are that you shuffle every draw. I'm still going to use discard piles as normal because uh, this is a very special situation. But if we do not draw this card, it is game over. So that is the current situation. But there's more. Oh, yes, there's still more. Because as I said, Zoe and Hank, they can't even use this card if they draw it. So what do we do with them? Now here's, a, I'm not a statistician, but this is something that I bought over from my competitive CCG days. I used to be a competitive Magic the Gathering player and Call of Cthulhu player. And then I was very light competitive in the other LCGs before I gave up entirely. But I believe it's better to dig deep than dig shallow, but have a higher chance of using the card you draw. You know what I mean? To put that in a, make that make more sense. The deck with the Dunwich cards is 14 cards long, okay? We can dig with a maximum of six people 
and that's uh, 640, and that's about six, 43% chance of drawing the card we want. So it's almost a 50-50% chance of drawing the card we want. So we actually have a pretty good chance of pulling this off, assuming we win the roll when we get it. It's not actually that big a long shot. It's not like a crazy long shot. But two of our guys can't actually draw it, okay? So we have six people going in. Two of them can't draw it. That means we have a one-third chance of when we draw a card of not actually being able to use it, okay? But we have a two-thirds chance of being able to use it. So what that tells me in my crappy, I really am not into ma I really am not that good at maths, is that I would rather dig deep into the deck and almost have a 50% chance of drawing the card, the, the chances of the correct card being drawn and it being drawn by the person who can't use it is pretty low. The chances is that they'll draw the card and it will be the wrong card. That's the most likely thing to happen. But if we don't dig deep, we really reduce the percentage chance of drawing it at all. So even though Hank and Zoe cannot actually use this card, I'm still going to send them into the science building just so we have almost a 50% chance of drawing the card anyway. And that is the situation. We have this card over here, which we need to draw. And we, if we don't draw it, it's game over. So, oh, not, not it's even worse than that. I keep saying that, but it is even worse than that because not only do we have to pass the test once we draw it, if we draw it, if we draw it on the right person, we also need to pass the test. And then once you pass the test, then you need to roll a die for every gate and get a success. Then you have a one in six chance per gate to actually close a gate. I mean, this is pretty hard, but we do have four gates on the board. We only need to close one. Like I said, this is actually not a complete Hail Mary. We actually have a pretty decent chance, almost a 50% chance of getting the card we want. We have a two thirds chance of it being on a person who can do it. And then if we pass the test, we've got four die rolls to get a six, which is uh, not, I mean, I mean, this is a long shot, but it's not like, you know, a one in a million chance is what I'm trying to say. Whatever, like I said, let's get into it. Let's see if we can actually pull this baby off. So first things first, we're gonna zip over to Leo. Leo has to roll for his uh, blessing. Your blammo. Anything but a one would be nice. Thank you very much. Okay, he gets a two. And we're going to move his fight up to four. Uh, no, I'm going to leave it where he is because he's got two focus. So he can get to four next turn. He's got plus two fight. That means he's got six fight to close the gate. So up to Yogoth. Okay, this bloke here, he is not gonna bother you changing his focus because why? He can't get to three focus anyway, because he's only got two. He does have a second focus point because of the ruby. But he does have three movement, so he is gonna go uh, one, two, three into the science building. Lily, uh, Lily is, She's got four movement, so she can go one, two, three, four. She's already got a max law. Um, yeah, max law. And she's going to wobble her values here. So she goes first to max stamina, goes to seven. So her stamina goes up and her actual stamina also goes up. And then she goes boom puts up her sanity so her sanity goes oh and her sanity actually went down when we did that as well so her sanity is at three and then we go your blam her sanity goes up to four and her sanity goes up to four so so now that we've got this sort of maxed remember we are minus one so even though it says five stamina sanity she's actually at four we're going to send this up here and get her all her stamina, her sanity back. But anyway, the point is she's in the right spot. This girl also gets to roll for her thing. She's in the other world. Okay, that's a pass. And she is also going to, actually she's going to use her one and just set her law up by one. 
and of course she moves up into the city. Hank is going to go one, two, three into the science building. He's not going to change anything, but he does need to roll for this. Let's please not get a one. Getting a one would kind of suck. Okay, beautiful. And Zoe is also going to go one, two into the building. And we're going to start moving her up. So we're going to go, you know, I'm not actually, I'm going to leave her law like that. Roland is also going to go. Okay. So Roland gets one clue because he's missing a clue. So his ability gives him one clue. He doesn't need to use his bank loan. He doesn't have to roll for his bank loan. So we just untap that. And then he goes one, two, three, four, and that puts him in. And he's good to go. But he's got to use his three focus. He actually has four focus. So he's going to go one, two, three, which means he loses his favor of best token. Okay, and finally we have Joe Diamond. Joe Diamond is going to use his focus to go one, two, three to give him law. And then he's going to go one, two, three, four into the science building. And while he's in the science building, we're going to do, because everyone's piled up in that one spot, we're going to do a mass amount of trading. I don't think you can trade allies, unfortunately, because he does not need that focus. He's got three focus already, so four focus is just insane. But we're going to do some trading here. So uh, basically, we're going to give king and yellow to Joe. We'll give both of these to a spellcaster. We'll give these to the spellcaster. And that gives her some decent combat. Okay, he's got a... Oh, wait, we need to give him something. We'll give him this. We'll give... Okay, actually, we'll, we'll do this. We'll give... We'll give this thing to Joe, because then he can use the automatic plus this. We'll give the rifle to you. We'll give the knife to you. So she has the knife, the cross, and she has the holy water. We'll give this knife to... You, this is a spell casting, so we'll give this knife to you, and I'll give her that. So she needs a good weapon still. Okay, so that's the that's the trading. But we did do something of interest here. We did trade the king of yellow, which we are then going to tap. We're in the movement phase still. He has one. He has two movement left. So he gets to roll one die and we're looking for a success. Gablamo. That's a fail. Now this gives him four clues. So I'm actually going to spend a clue on this and roll two dice in the hope that we get this. Let's go. You can do it. Come on. You can do this. Yes. Ah. Beautiful. So we spend that. He loses one more sanity. And he would have lost a sanity, by the way, for when he closed the gate. So he's that there. And he gets four clues. One, two, three, four. Which means that he has eight chances of passing the card if we get it. Okie dokie. So uh, that's the situation. Let's get into this. Um, Uh, what's happened here? I didn't move his law. Oh, no, that's why I'm using clues. Your blammo. Rare book collection. Okay, so this card, you only can use it. If you have the Necromonicon in your hand when you draw this card, which is pretty hard to do, you can gain a special type of condition, which, change, which adds an extra ability to the location. This is another case where you might want to use the official rules because... Whenever you're digging for Pacific cards, you it's annoying if it's in the discard pile. But usually, 
It's just a rare occurrence, so you ever need to do that, even though this is another occurrence. Uh, <laughs> the point is, if you have the Necromonicon, you park out at the library. Oh, that's the library. Science building. As you enter a darkened laboratory, a monster appears and attacks you. Gee. Uh, well, that's pretty silly. Okay, Star Vampire. We cannot kill this guy at all. When you make any fight check, add plus one to each die you roll for purposes of checking for a success. So we're always <laughs> we're always blessed. But the thing is, our fight is four. Our fight is three. It's negative three, and it's negative three will. So we're actually just gonna sneak by this guy. He does have three sneak, so we have to spend a clue for this. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Okay, so that's a pass. This goes back to the box. Okay, your turn, you blamo. Science building. You find your muscular, bored-looking man who challenges you to an arm wrestling match. Lose two stamina if you accept. If this does not knock you unconscious, Sir William Brighton laughs and slaps your shoulder, offering you to join the investigation. Take his Ella card. If it's not available, take $5 instead. I would really like that $5. Oh, you're talking about money. When everyone was all piled up, I should probably give all the money to our uh, digger over there. So I wouldn't mind the money. Uh, we can take this hit pretty easily because uh, of our ability to regen so I'm actually going to take this and then let's just see if he's in there we have one card left so we'll just see if he's in there what was it uh, will and you blemmer uh, what that's a error in the script not found in deck what's professor if I type in prof professor it gets it. Okay, so the error in the in the scripting here is if there's a single card in the deck and it is using a name search and it's not found, it errors. That's probably for every one of those decks. That is a major bug that I need to fix, which is why I play these games on the channel to test the mod. So that that's a uh, that's a hot fix that needs to be pushed out very quickly because it's it does not work. It breaks the game. Anyway, whatever. The point is, the professor's here, so we actually get one, two, three, four, five, Cashola. Okay, she is in the outer world. What do you got for us, Hank? Yablamo. Jazz Mulligan, the head janitor at the college, catches you wandering around the restricted area of the building and escorts you outside. Move to the street. Oh, well, there you go. Zoe Blamo. This is a big one. Uh, this, no. A professor of the occult asks you to hold a hideous statue that he believes to have strange powers while he reads a scroll. Energy shoots through your body. Make a luck minus one check. If you pass, your spirit rises from your body and you feel you have the power to switch bodies with another investigator. You may choose another investigator from the pile of unused investigators and bring it into play as a new character, discarding your current investigator along with all of the items, skills, trophies, etc. If you fail, nothing happens. This is awesome. This could win us the game. Assuming we pass this turn, this could actually win us the game. I'll tell you what. Let's, let's roll and see if it works. We need a success. We've got no clues. Let's do it. Let's do it. We, we, we need, we've got four dice rolling because uh, we've got five luck and it's a pass. So now we get to actually discard this character completely. So we'll just get rid of those things. And when I, when I do a devour, I actually also discard the relationship card and redraw them because it makes no sense that different investigators have the same relationship card. And... Here's another bug. That card dropped down. This card is supposed to go to the bottom of this deck. Like that. 
Okay, that's another bug that needs fixing. Well, I'm finding bugs all over the place. But look, if we go into here, we have Kate. Now, Kate is an awesome character and she's broken and powerful. So let's, uh, we'll just go type Kate into here and devour Zoe and get Kate. You blam more errors. What is going on? Oh, you know what this error, you know what this is. Okay, so her, she has this thing that says, do not place a clue token on the science building to start the game. So when this, so she, she basically starts with one clue, but then she gets the science building clue. So she has two. That's the, thematically how it works. But because we've been playing, the clue that the game saved as the Arkham Horror science building clue has been used or discarded or whatever. It's not on the table. So it's now erring trying to delete that clue. So that is yet another bug. And the reason I've never found that is because this is the first time I've ever tried using a devourer and getting Kate in the middle of a game. I just didn't test that situation. So boom, that's another bug that needs fixing. Wow. Okay. So that's all done. And well, this is another bug. What is going on? Yeah, these should be all turned around. And then they form decks. Okay. Jeez. Wow. I've got a lot of, I've got to put out a hot fix immediately after this game. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Whatever. So we're giving her four speed because she's going to be moving around. We're going to give her high law and we're going to give her high will. So that's what we're setting. And this is why she's so broken. Look at this ability. Gates and monsters cannot appear in Kate's location due to her flux stabilizer. Monsters and gates do not disappear if she enters their location, however, and monsters can move into her location as usual. So what this terribly worded rule means is that when you are with science, when you have the flux capacitor that she has, stabilizer, I should say, gates can't open there. So if she, if she is, say, sitting at Independence Square, which is an unstable location, and out comes a Mythos card that says the gate opens. Nothing happens. No Doom token, no monsters, Zippo. But the cool thing is somewhere in this deck, like somewhere in this bazillion spells here, you can, there's a card that allows you to stack the Mythos deck three deep, right? So basically, if you get that card onto Kate, you can completely control the Mythos stage of this game by stopping gates from opening every turn. So you can stack the gate three times. She has six sanity. I think it's a minus one sanity when you use it. Maybe, maybe it's minus two. Even with minus two sanity, for every two sanity, you get three turns with no monsters and no gates. I mean, it is super, super strong. So I usually don't use this, this combo, but... Fuck you, Arkham. I'm going to use this combo. <laughs> so basically, we're going to park our butts. We've got, how much money have we got? We've got $25. So we're going to park our butts on the magic shop now and dig out that spell for Kate to control the mythos phase. That's the new plan. I will also, we'll send, we'll send Ashcan to Curiosity Shop to get the Elder Signs to try and remove some Doom tokens, but plan now is to dig out her spell anyway let's uh, give this a shuffle one more shuffle and she gets one common one unique two spells and a skill okay that's law fist of yog premonition cast an exhaust to move one skill slider up to two slots that is lame and the saber, well, she got really bad items. Okay, so that's that. So this is actually pretty damn awesome for us. And she got came with a whole shitload of money. It's awesome. Roland, what do you got for us? Kablamo. Oh my God, it's here. Yes. This is the card. On, we had one more guy to draw. 
you find a student pounding on a strange device that he has hooked up to a massive machinery. He states that it's a dimensional beam machine. If you offer to help him, make a law minus two check. If you pass, beams shoot out in all directions, disrupting the gates opening throughout the board. Roll a die for each open gate one at a time. On a success, the gate is closed. However, you may not take it as a trophy, but instead return it to the pile of gate markers. If you fail, the machinery overheats and explodes. Roll a dice and gain that much stamina, blah, 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 blah. The point is, we drew the card. That is awesome. So now we need to actually roll it. So we have two rolls of this. We have... It's a law minus two, so we roll two dice, and we have one skill, uh, one uh, uh, clue. Now, let me just quickly check. We do have vision quest. No, that's not it. Where is it? Oh, I thought we had a spell that allowed us to re-roll. I thought we had a spell that allowed us to re-roll uh, skill checks, but I think it only worked on the person holding it anyway, so whatever. Forget all that. So let's just do it. Roll two dice. You can do it! Oh, come on. Come on! Yes! Bam! Whew! Okay, so we have passed it. Now comes the last stage. We need to roll four times. One, two, three, four, and try and get a single success. We need one success out of these four dice. But again, there's always a catch. We do not want, if we have a choice, we want one to close regardless, but it would be better if Yogoth didn't close or if the City of the Great Race didn't close because these two people are actually about to come out and be able to seal these gates. So that is the situation. So now let's roll for Dreamlands. We're rolling one dice. And because these are not skill tests, we cannot use clues. So we just have a one roll and done. So Dreamlands, bam. Come on, you can do this. You can do this. Okay, that's a fail. Okay, so rolling for the next one. Kablamo. Come on. Come on. Oh, give me a break. It's two ones in a row. What is this bullshit? Let's go. This is a third roll, isn't it? Oh, no. No! <laughs> Come on! Okay, the last roll. You can do it. Let's go. No. No! Oh, I was so close. That's it. Okay, can you... Oh, my... Jeez! Okay, so basically, that's that.